G'day, Nigel Lee from Sax School. I want to show you in this lesson how to quickly get that King Curtis sound from Shotgun. What we're going to do is we're going to learn one really cool lick that's taken from the original recording. I'm going to show you how you can use that in your own playing to really quickly make a very authentic sounding solo. Now first of all, let me tell you why this is such an important technique. Because did you know, by taking a, a building block or a lick from a certain style, it's, it's the quickest way to get that style into your own playing. And everybody does this, even the great players learned in this same manner. So this is a fantastic way for you to really quickly learn any new style, whether that's something like this King Curtis shotgun, or whether you're looking at a jazz style or a commercial style. It always works the same way. So by taking an authentic lick, an actual lick from an original recording and then learning that and really absorbing it into our own playing, we can start to quickly create that sound. And this is the lick I'm going to show you. I'll play it for you first, see if you recognize it. You recognize that one? So that's one of the first licks out of the opening sequence for Shotgun. It's a really cool lick because it's got a very King Curtis sound about it. Um, we've got that growling E flat, we've got some scoops on there, and we've got a cool little rhythm as well. Let me show you the notes on the tenor and the alto, and then I'm going to show you how you can take a simple little lick like this and weave it into your own solo. On a tenor saxophone, this starts on a high E flat, so I've got my octave key on, and I've got two side keys here, the D and the E flat, okay? High E flat. And when I hit that note, I'm then rolling with my tongue like this. And so that gets that rolling sound. If I start at normal and then add my tongue, you'll see what I mean. Hear the difference there? Now it's a bit tricky to get, so the way to do it is to keep all of your throat quite relaxed, your tongue very relaxed, and just let it vibrate. You might need to do that process of playing the note first and then introducing the roll to really get it working and feeling comfortable. So go from that E flat up to high F, and I'm playing the front F where I've got my octave key on, C key, and my index finger is up here on the F spatula key. So E flat, rolling with my tongue to F, down to D flat or C sharp, which is just my octave key, and then B flat, I've got my first finger on the B and the B flat key, then G, and then B flat, B flat, so it's three, four, one, roll on the E flat, F, D flat, B flat, G, B flat, B flat. Bum, ba, 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 boo, da. Let's try it. Two, three, four. So in the same key, it's a bit of an easier uh, sequence to play on the alto saxophone because we're going to start on a B flat, rolling on the B flat, then up to a C down to an A flat, so it's just like G sharp, down to F, D, F, F. You wanna try it with me? Two, three, four. And make that last note nice and short. Now if you wanna try an alternate to this, there's a, there's a second riff that happens a bit later on in this solo, uh, which is using kind of the same melodic shape, but on a different note. This time I'm gonna start on the E flat on the alto. E flat, rolling again with your tongue, and then down to D, C, down to A flat, G, F, F. Okay, so E flat with a roll, down to D, down to C, octave key comes off, and then A flat, G, F, F. Sounds like this, three, four, one. <laughs> And try it. Three, four. So that second phrase on the tenor starts on an A flat. So I've got my octave key on, G fingers down, and my A flat key here. Rolling on the A flat, and then I'm going to a G, F, and then D flat, which is the same as C sharp, down to C, down to B flat. <laughs> So that's an alternative line you could use. 
Okay, so let's walk at, talk about how we can work this into our solo. And uh, the trick really is to use these building blocks as kind of like anchor points in your solo. As you're improvising, you know they're gonna sound amazing. So all you're gonna do is weave your improvised line so that you come up to that, um, that lick nugget or the building block and use it then as an anchor point in your solo and then go from there uh, onwards with your improvising. And if you've got a bunch of these stored up in here, then you can use them as a little points of interest as you go through your solo. They can be things that you use to start a phrase or to end a phrase, or you can even use a section of them to incorporate into a melodic line. It's a really powerful tool. Now, a great way to practice this technique is to actually uh, to do this, uh, this following exercise that we're gonna do now. I've got a longer backing track for you, and what I want you to do, if you do it with me, is we're gonna take four bars each. For my four bars, I'm going to make up something for the first two bars. I'm just gonna use a, uh, let's see, a B flat blues scale. B flat, D flat, uh, E flat, E natural, F, A flat, and B flat. <laughs> So I'm going to make a solo up for two bars, and then the second two bars I'm going to play our lick. And then it'll be your turn for four bars. So you make a solo up for two bars using the blue scale, and then use the lick for the second two bars. And then it'll be back to me. We'll swap backwards and forwards and see how it sounds. Remember, if you're an alto player, then you'll be playing the lick in your key, and you'll be using this blue scale, the F blue scale. F, A flat, B flat, B natural, C, E flat and F. Okay, are you up for the challenge? Remember, four bars each, I get to go first, and then it'll be your turn. We're going to go backwards and forwards. Let's have some fun.
Okay, how'd you get on with that? You know, this sort of exercise, you can do it over and over and over again, and there's always something extra to learn. And don't forget, if you work out some more licks from this particular tune, from Shotgun, then you could go through the same process with that. And even better, when you've got a bunch of different licks, is to then combine them in different ways, along with the backing track, to practice weaving them into your solo. I can't tell you how important this sort of technique is for quickly developing your improvising skills and for understanding new styles as a saxophone player. So, well done for making it through this lesson. You can download the resources that we talked about in this lesson, the, um, the music sheet and the backing track from my blog, and there's a link in the notes below the video here. But if you really want to take things further, inside the Sax School members area, I've got a series of lessons on Shotgun, including a, a lick workout where I show you six killer licks from Shotgun, and we have some fun working those through in a similar process. That's over at mcgillmusic.com, but don't forget to go to the blog to grab the um, materials from this lesson, and please leave me a comment, let me know what you think about this lesson, see if it's been helpful for you, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because there's new stuff coming in all the time. I'll see you next time.